by. I'm not gonna have enough to get by. And what he's doing right now is pretty dangerous. I wouldn't normally do that. Someone's getting demoted off of that one, but he made it. We have to run like different patterns with the, the nozzle. It could be a fog pattern where it opens up really wide and we have what's called straight stream like he's doing right now. And you don't really want to have that many hose streams going at once because it would get you wet and cause a steam burn. You don't want steam burns. Those are the worst burns you can have. Hi, my name is Brandon Hill. I've been a firefighter for 20 years for our California Fire Department. Today on Experts React, we'll be checking out Firefighter Simulator, The Squad, to get my reactions. So let's check it out. All right, let's go. All right, looks pretty realistic inside there. Pretty good, got the MDC there. Now my little screen will show up where the call's at, gives the address, what's on fire, who's hurt. And then up top, there'll be a little speedometer where the captain keep his eye on the, the engineer driving. Make sure it doesn't go too fast. Got a little smoke up there. So normally firefighters, when we see a little smoke, we'll go even faster. They're being good to the cops right now, showing them blocking off the street, that always happens. Got a good size fire there. It depends on uh, how big the fire is, how like the wind is going on, but a, a fire like that, then yeah, they'll have everybody evacuate around the house. But that property's pretty big, so probably have maybe the next door, the two next door neighbors evacuate, but everybody else will probably just stay shelter in place, what we call it. And that's a lot of fire there. So you have some bigger hose lines normally. And normally you walk in with a tool, you would have either a hose line in your hands or a again. The tool's gonna help you break down doors or a pike pole, we can like pull some ceiling, get to the attic area. He was hollering in right there. Got it. Yep. I have the house. Normally a door like that, we just kick it in. We wouldn't uh, use any mist, but it's all right. Break the door. Yeah, as long as I took it for him to do that, we just kick that like a donkey kick and you get right on in there. And then we'll be crawling in there too. We'll be able to just stand up and walking like nothing's going on. I think you have to carry me. Well, I'm gonna pick you up and we're going. And That's pretty good. Just threw him over his shoulder pretty easily, making my shoulder hurt looking at that. But knowing a person that's down like that, we would normally just grab him and drag him out. And you would have a little help. You wouldn't be doing it all by yourself. And you have your gurneys waiting for him. So yeah, throw him on the gurney. Use the gurney to be on the ground and make it easier for him to put him on there. And then everybody will help him raise the gurney up and transport him to the hospital. So the equipment that we wear, it's uh, after it's all said and done, it uses about 85 to 100 extra pounds on you. So it get very exhausting after a little while. So that's why I'm laughing about the guys wearing the air the whole time. Cause nobody else, you walk inside, they put your air on cause you're gonna use a lot more energy and use a lot of air in your air tanks. They're rated to like 45 minutes, but if you're working pretty good, it's like 28 to 30 minutes so the air tank's gonna go off. In position. And they're doing a good job. They're kneeling down. That's what we normally do. We fight fire. We don't stand up. We get low because it's a lot cooler down there. But it's outside, so it should be, he should be all right. And normally we would stay outside. You wouldn't really like walk too close to that kind of fire because it's in a garage and usually garages aren't very stable. That could collapse on you. So you would just normally just stay about where he was earlier and put the fire out that way. I see there's a car in there was on fire. Most people get worried about the cars exploding like, like they do in Hollywood. They never do. Only it does explode is a the tire. There's like too much air pressure and the tire will explode. So that's the explosion hearing. Actually, not the car, it's exploding. So if you get an accident, there's no reason to run out the car. You're okay. He's doing a good job hitting the sea of the fire. I see the fire is where the fire is pretty much the basis of it, which actually is on fire. That's what you want to hit. And now we have fire like that too, you have a bigger hose line. That would give you some more water to put on that fire to put it out faster. And I saw a guy to the right, Nomi, you and that guy would work together. Of course, we work together and put that fire out together. It looks good. He's on the guy, you know, on one knee, he's doing his good, doing a good job, staying low. But this guy's pretty good, doing a couple different jobs. Mostly we all have our specialized jobs that we did, but he made entry, he made a save, and also he's putting fire out with the hose on him, so. So on our engines, we have four people on our engines. On the trucks, we have a grand total of about six people show up on the, on the trucks. So you have 10 people off the bat right then and there. For us, most fires we have, we have two trucks and three engines show up right then and there. So you have almost like 40, 50 people are show up on scene right there. Everybody's a specialized job to do their job and make sure that the fire goes out. Depending on the size of the department, some departments like probably like this one, it's a little smaller. They'll do one job and go on to the other one. But when you have so many people on scene, you usually have to stick to your one job. It's kind of like a playbook. We call it control chaos. Everybody does their one job and then one job happens, the fire goes out. It's like Bill Belichick. Do your job, yeah. So doing a good job of spraying the fire. You have to run like different patterns with the, the nozzle. It could be a fog pattern where it opens up really wide and we have what's called a straight stream like he's doing right now. Sometimes you want to get that intermediate for a fire like that one. Perfect. And almost got it out. That's pretty realistic too. When you put a fire out too, it gets really dark in there because all you got is all the smoke now. It starts to bake down on top of you and you can't see anything. So it's really good to know where your position is at that time. And you want to be careful too, scraping up in the attic like that too, because sometimes guys will be on top of the roof cutting holes. So gotta be careful about straight streaming up there. Also, he's got a little buddy helping him out. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. And usually you'll debrief after the fire's out. That's a little unusual there. I don't know why they're debriefing now, but you want to wait till your job's done before you start debriefing with the chiefs and captains. Oh, perfect. Do a little driving. We'll make sure we open the doors. And yeah, doing it pretty good there. You're gonna usually follow the ladder truck, usually go behind the slowest vehicle, which is gonna be the ladder truck because it's the heaviest. So it depends on where the, what area you work in. So if you work in a busier or like a busier area, like if you work down the street, like in downtown LA, sometimes those guys go on a 25 to 20 to 30 calls a day. That's just one resource. Where I work now, we go on about, about 15 to 18 calls per day. Each call usually about lasts a little bit over an hour. So 24 hours a day, you're pretty much done. You're gonna probably have six, seven hours to yourself. 
That's for eating and everything like that too. And that's not including our normal work day of doing everything else too. So we have actual normal work day, everybody else nine to five. After five o'clock, after dinner time, it's pretty much your time. But then that, we have responsibilities we gotta do. So if you don't do those responsibilities, I got pushed on later that, later that day too. So not much sleep going on. I know everybody thinks we're playing cards and stuff going on, but usually we have stuff going on before we have a call. And did a good job clearing the intersection. That's what we normally do. The one vehicle would be the ladder truck. It would stop and slowly go through the intersection and everybody else would follow after it. That way everybody doesn't hit that person on the rigs behind them. And normally we try to stay in the middle of the road. That way you let everybody pull to the right, which rarely happens. People don't like to stop or pull to the right. So what they like to do is uh, pull to the other right or they'll try to fall behind us. Did a good job following the ladder truck. And we can't go too fast. You can only go 10 miles an hour above the speed limit. So if it's like a 45 mile an hour speed limit, we can only go 55. If there's an actual fire, we'll push that a little bit, but we're not supposed to. And they were supposed to stop at every red light and every stop sign as well too. But like he's doing right now, you don't want to weave in and out of traffic like that because you'll confuse people. So you want to stick to one side, which will make everybody pull to the right. So when we start weaving in and out like he's doing now, People will confuse and people go, you know, they'll turn in front of you, turn in front of other traffic because people will panic when we come around with the lights and sirens. I have enough to get by. I'm not going to have enough to get by. And what he's doing right now is pretty dangerous. I wouldn't normally do that. Someone's getting demoted off of that one, but he made it because sometimes you want to get there a little faster, especially when you have a ladder truck that's going pretty slow in front of you. You want to get there a little faster. So it's very tempting sometimes to pass them, but we're not supposed to. If he's on a real engine, though, he would try to try to tow that yellow line there, stay right there in the middle, and that will make everybody go to the right hand side. And he's got to use that air horn a little more. Especially in the tunnel. Love the air horn in the tunnel. This is why we can't hear. And we got a little smoke, so when guys see the smoke, we'll step on the gas a little harder. And like he just did right there and lost control a little bit. So if you got a green like that, you can go, oh, and took somebody out. That does happen, actually. People do get hit sometimes. But normally, unlike him, though, we would stop on scene and make sure they're okay and fix them. And then someone else would get our fire. So you definitely want to, don't want to get any accidents. We'd have a little talk with the engineer after that. So he's doing a good job there, riding in the middle of the road. Everybody's pulled to the right. They're actually stopping. Listen to the DMV handbook. I like it. He almost missed it. So I got a little fire in the back, so everybody gets to work. Normally you see guys carrying ladders off of there in the ladder of the building. Guys going around, turning utilities off. There we go, 360 check. That's what the captain would do. He would walk around the whole building and make sure everything's safe. Uh, very realistic. Normally he would grab a tool, which he's, I think he's gonna get that right now. So we got a victim in the bedroom. See that up top. So normally you would follow with that guy with the hose line. You guys would go together right to the front door. And that door too, it's because it have any security bars, so you just kick that door in, save your tool. And then we wouldn't be walking in there like that. We'd probably be crawling in and staying up against one side of the wall. That way we lose our bearings. Yeah, I know. How do I, I want to pick, so pick that guy up. So my shoulder's starting to ache a little bit right now. He's gonna pick him up and throw him over his shoulder. But normally you have another person in there with you to help you out. Grab that. <laughs> uh, this guy's pretty good though. He can carry somebody and turn off electricity at the same time. It's pretty good. Normally there'll be the ambulance a little closer to pick the guy up, put him on the gurney, and take him to the hospital. Where he's carrying the guy, he uses where we carry our high-rise hose packs right there too. So we don't usually carry people on our backs like that. Not good for the knees. They grab more hose. Normally a house fire like that one, you probably would grab two hose lines at the most. When be you wouldn't have like what? I see two guys right there and he's grabbing another one, three. Oh, there's one four. Yeah. You don't want to flood the house. Usually most of the damage comes from the water damage, not the actual fire actually sometimes. Well, that's pretty good though. Let you connect the hose up. Okay, that makes it realistic. All right, it's good. So that's where you would kneel down, that's where you would mask up, and then you would go into the house, either crawling or doing a duck walk, staying up against the wall there. And you don't really want to have that many hose streams going at once because it would get you wet and cause a steam burn. You don't want steam burns. Those are the worst burns you can have. But doing a good job hitting the sea of the fire and doing a good job with getting the, we call those fingers, fire up, up top up there. And usually we have a lot of guys on scene too. Why one, one side's putting the fire out, other side would be moving everything out, getting their stuff out, getting their valuables getting their pictures, we try to do a good service for people. That's a lot of fire too. So normally you would do a coordinated attack with the other hose line that's there, but you don't make sure you cross streams. You wanna just work together and put that fire out. Back into the corner, keep going. There they go, they're working together now, perfect. Oh, we got more fire in the back, okay, all right. So normally there'll be guys on the other side helping you out with that side of the fire, but, oh, we're briefing. You guys still got fire going on, we're debriefing already, all right. And yeah, after the fire's out, we'll start opening windows like that, clear it out, get our fans in there, get all the smoke out of there too as well, then do the fun part overall. That was good. No, I have not had rescued a cat from a tree. Have you ever seen a dead cat in a tree or a skeleton of a cat in a tree? Does not happen. But I do have a story for you. I've gotten a bird out of a tree. So we went on a call for this guy, called for an exotic bird called Sylvester. Just remember his name. He's up in a tree. At the time, I was a rookie, so I had to go up there and grab the bird out of there. So we get a tree. I climb up about 90 feet. I get up there. It's a cute little bird, beautiful bird. I'm thinking like, oh, that's great. The guy told me, just put your arm out. He'll come to you, and you'll be just fine. Put my arm out. Instead of the, arm, the bird coming to my arm, a bird attacked me, clawed me up, beat the heck out of me, not only up there, but all the way down the ladder. And then after he got to the ladder, he flew to his master, and, or I shouldn't say master, but his owner. And uh, that was my little story. So no, no cats, just a bird out of a tree. Tore me up. <laughs> For Experts React, check out Gameology on Facebook and YouTube. My name is Brandon Hill. I had a great time. I'll see you next time.
He's hungry, that's all. <laughs> he wants some truffles. <laughs> I forgot, once I got the five minutes away, it's still out of the Excited to check it out. You remember? Oh, my God. I'm leaving. <laughs>